Good morning, USA. It's Lauren LaRosa. DJ Envy is out today. Charlemagne the guy, how you feeling? Uh, peace to the planet. Guess what day it is? Guess what day it is? Hump day. <laughs> I feel like my breath stinks. Good morning, LL Cool Bay. How are oh, you? Oh, did you brush your teeth this morning or you was running late? No, actually, I didn't. I you overslept. Home, so. I am. I, I, I overslept this morning. I was in uh, Detroit all day yesterday uh, having a conversation with the Madam Vice President, Kamala Harris. You know, we had our We the Town Hall. I mean, We the People. Town hall. Audio town hall yesterday. And so uh, I flew out like 930 and got home like after midnight. And I was born in 1978, y'all. So but when I woke up this morning, it was 530. I had no intention of oversleeping, but I did. So I got a broadcast from home today. But you did a good job yesterday. Well, thank you, LL Cool Bay. And I appreciate I, that. I know that mic is hot, literally. Man, shut up. <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> I'm going to go brush my teeth as soon as I get a break, okay? How was your day yesterday? My day was good. I mean, I was here for work all day. And then um, a client that we're working with, with uh, Brown Girl Grinding, we did some press yesterday. So I did that after I left here, got home, and I knocked out. I woke up literally to, wait, to watch your interview. I watched the BT Hip Hop Awards. What else I watched? The Victoria's Secret Fashion Show. And then I went right back to sleep. Yeah, am I bugging or was it quiet for the BET Hip Hop Awards? I didn't even know the BET Hip Hop Awards was coming Yo, on. Who hosted? We got Fat Joe hosted. He did a great job, of course. We gonna talk about it because every mad people was like, "Yo, I didn't even know this was coming on." I didn't know it was coming on either. I just saw BET start uploading stuff from the awards. I missed it the first time it aired. I went back and watched it. And but then, I feel like this just happened with another award show. What was the other award? Oh, the MTV Awards. MTV Awards. I, we, I didn't realize that was on either. Yeah. Well, I will say, though, I feel like the Hip Hop Awards never, like, it's always different Hip Hop Awards versus the actual, like, regular BET Awards in L.A. But still, normally you you know it's coming. I didn't even know it was coming on. That's crazy. Bow Wow said it's because uh, we ain't got no Diddy parties no more. <laughs> Man, shut up. <laughs> Shut up. Uh, we're gonna we're gonna be playing back my conversation with Madam Vice President this morning too. We'll be playing that uh, in the seven a.m. hour. We got Morgan Woods coming up with front page news and a whole lot of other good stuff. Don't go anywhere. It's the world's most dangerous morning show, The Breakfast Club. Yes, it's the world's most dangerous morning show, The Breakfast Club. Uh, Charlemagne the God, LL Cool Bay, Lauren Larosa, DJ Envy is out today. You know, Jess Hilarious is on maternity leave, so it's just us two. And let's get into front page news with Morgan. Good morning, Morgan. Good morning, good morning. Yeah, good morning to you, Dr. Mr. Charlemagne, the God. You know what I'm saying? You had a very Dr. Good, uh, what? I don't first know. I'm all, just first of all, I have an I have an honorary doctorate from South Carolina State University. Respect my honorary doctorate, man. Okay. Us real graduates don't respect honorary, but go ahead. Go go but go off. That's what Kamala told you yesterday, but go off. Let's, 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 anyways, okay. So, Vice President Kamala Harris, obviously, if you missed it, I don't know where you was at, but uh, Vice President Kamala Harris sat down for an exclusive iHeart Audio Town Hall in Detroit with our very own Charlemagne the God. Um, when asked questions about why she sounds so scripted and sticking to her talking points, well, here's what she had to say. At my rallies, I say the same thing when I go to Detroit as I do in Philly, as I do wherever I am, to make sure that people hear and, and receive what I think are some of the most um, critical issues that are at stake in this election. Yeah, so she uh, said that what's at stake in this election is truly profound. And of course, I love that you guys talked about the confusion around the stimulus checks where Democrats in Congress actually had to pass that vote funding um, that uh, uh, passed that funding and Trump put his name on those checks. Another topic that I'm sure many of us can relate to is the legalization of marijuana. Uh, VP Harris says she does want to legalize marijuana on a national level, saying she and President Biden worked to get weed reclassified in the criminal justice system. And when she was a uh, San Francisco district attorney, she was against harsh penalties for weed crimes. Let's hear those comments from VP Harris at the town hall in Detroit with CTG to make it classified as a lesser um, harm. Mm -hmm. And so that took some time. There's a whole process around that, but that's the work that we have done. I was the most progressive prosecutor in California on marijuana cases and would not send people to jail for simple possession of weed. 
So she also indicated that she is confident she is going to win the election in November, but adds that the race is tight. Now, Vice President Kamala Harris, she is expected to sit down for an exclusive with Fox News later today, taking questions from anchor Brett Baer. Um, that's set to air at 6 p.m. Eastern from Pennsylvania, another key battleground state in this election coming up with coming up in less than three weeks. Um, it'll be her first six, sit down with Fox ever. Uh, any thoughts on last night, Charlemagne? Oh, I I just enjoyed the conversation. You know, it's one of those conversations. It's an hour long. You can go watch it on Breakfast Club's YouTube page. We'll be playing it playing it back uh, next hour as well here on the Breakfast Club. But it's just one of those things. Like, you know, if you want to actually get accurate information, and uh, you know, don't be don't be um, fueled by misinformation, and actually know the truth, you'll you'll get it from this conversation. Um, but that's only if you want want to believe it. <laughs> you, oh, know, like, you can still be presented with the truth and still choose to believe, believe, believe whatever lies are out there. But that's on you. Yeah, I, I like yeah. the I like the way she was like really comfortable with you, but you didn't like you 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 pushed her for the stuff that a lot like you came from a different angle than a lot of the other interviews came from. Like it was really just like a conversation. Like I felt like she was just like talking to us. Yeah, well, I mean this that's my that's my fourth you know public conversation with the vice president like you know i've been sitting down with kamala harris and she was a senator you know that's she first came on the breakfast club in 2018 so we have we have a good rapport you know a, a friendly yeah. but pointed rapport yeah it seemed like you guys had you cracked your jokes but you kept things serious as well so meanwhile many americans are eager to vote early uh the latest national nbc news poll found that five percent of registered voters have already cast their ballots another 47 percent said they plan to vote early about two and three will vote early uh um who will vote early will support kamala harris about 17 percent above donald trump voters nearly six and ten voters who plan to vote on election day support former president trump while 37 uh percent who plan to vote on election day say they support Harris. Let's hear from some early voters who have already cast their ballot. Because last time I waited, line going around the block, around the corner, now I'm getting my vote in today, right now. I was awake before six, I would have come out then, but it was kind of chilly, but I did it for them, for the women in my family. So 46 states and Washington, D.C. has started some form of early voting. 13 states will begin um, as the will begin this week as or will begin as this week continues excuse me among those are key battleground states of north carolina and nevada others include iowa kansas rhode island tennessee louisiana washington massachusetts the district of course and georgia so if you're um in those states you can cast your ballots uh as of this week uh speaking of georgia county election officials in georgia are being told they must certify election results an atlanta judge ruled that local officials have a mandatory fixed obligation to certify the results. The judge added that the election um, election officials should share any concerns about fraud with the appropriate authorities, but cannot use that as basis to delay certification. Um, he said if election superintendents were free to play investigator, prosecutor, jury, and judge, then Georgia voters would be silenced. This is one of two closely watched cases involving election certification in Georgia, with the other still pending from, you know, that last election. So... Any thoughts on that? I wonder who got to guard them votes for three weeks. Like who got to watch? Like who got to watch over all them votes, all them early votes for the next three weeks? Do they keep them in a vote or something? Like, they need to have the aunties in the church do it because they. I'm they trying to play. tell you. Look, the trustees, right? You know. So oh, that board. deacon board. <laughs> right, definitely. Well. We'll uh, see what's happening on the other side of the aisle at 7 a.m. Get caught up with Trump. He was in Chicago. And, uh, of course, we'll talk about what's happening in the Adams administration at 7 as well. That's your front page news for 6. I'm Morgan Wood. Thank you, Morgan Wood. Uh, we got to get it off your chest coming up right now. 1-800-585-1051. Uh, call up. Tell us why you're blessed. Call up if you want to vent. Whatever it is, we're here for you. It's the world's most dangerous morning show, The Breakfast Club. The Breakfast Club. This is your time to get it off your chest. Keep calling. 800-585-1051. We want to hear from you on The Breakfast Club. Good morning. Who's this? Yo, yo. Hey, Charlamagne. I saw your interview last night. First of all, before I say what I'm going to say, I just want them to drop an clues ball for you, bro, because I'm proud of how far you done came, man. Thank I ain't going to lie to you, but you came a long way, bro. Growth is real, man, and I'm proud of you, bro, for real. For real. Thank you, King. I appreciate it. Mean, that means the world coming from you, my brother. 
And, and now what I want to say is, I saw I saw the interview last night, and I'm a, and I feel like if the Democratic Party don't uphold to the promises that they make it to their voters, I really believe that they're going to lose the black vote. Well, a good majority of the black vote moving forward after this election. A, a lot of what Kamala Harris was saying is sounded good, but I think she's a little bit toned up to everyday American citizens. When when you ask them, I think when a guy asked about um, like what she do for the economy, she, she started mentioning like, you know, the, the, the home buying and all that stuff. But she went to where she was talking about how she made uh, medications affordable for seniors and all that. And I and I appreciate her doing that for that. But it's like, as far as like young black Americans, the Gen Z's and the millennials, like, bro, we living in a life, bro, where a lot of us, if we ain't left our mama house, we don't move back in with mama. So it's like, mm-hmm. what is what is her plan as far as like the immediate impact on the economy to where we can start getting back to saving money? So we can be able to to start investing into like uh, having a small business and stuff like that. But a lot of the, a lot of stuff. See, go ahead. Oh no! I would encourage you to Google. Just Google Kamala Harris's opportunity economy plan. That's what I would tell you to do. And a lot of what okay. you're asking for is in there. And 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 and, and the reason I give her uh, props on that is because I've seen what she's done the last almost four years in the White House in regards to putting money back, you know, in, in, in into the economy, especially with the American Rescue Plan and small small businesses. But but, but check, go look into it. All right, all right, I got you. Hey, look, one last thing. Can I say one last thing? Yes, sir. Lauren, Lauren up there, right? I'm here. What I do? Hey, hey, Lauren, I ain't going to lie to you. You my baby, and I rock with you, right? Oh, God. But I'm going to have to say this, dog. That Travis Kelsey comment you made last year is still on my chest, man. Mine too, man. You, you, you got you to gotta move on. You got to clear your throat right. and your chest. I'm for the... I'm going to move on, but you then need I'm going to say that. You need to use next to your vibes because I'm gonna, we passed Now, listen, that. listen. I'm going to say that. I'm going to move on, but but I, I gave you grace on that. But then you turn around, beginning of this football season, and say that Taylor Swift was carrying a league on them strong ass shoulders. I'm with you, Kate. Them bony Preach shoulders. Ain't they in them shoulders. You love you some white people. Yo. God damn, boy. That's so you crazy. You love you some white people. Them bony shoulders. <laughs> and, uh, <laughs> I'm so sorry about that. <laughs> I'm so listen, sorry. But she, listen. but she, you see where the camera keep going every time she had the game, though. Uh, we don't care. Oh, we don't care. Uh, get it off your chest. One eight hundred five eight five one zero five one. Call us right now if you want to vent. If you want to tell us why you blessed, reach out. It's the world's most dangerous morning show, The Breakfast Club. The Breakfast Club. Charlemagne, Dizzy, what up? Are we live? This is your time to get it off your chest. I got an indoor pool, an outdoor pool. We want to hear from you on The Breakfast Club. We can get on the phone right now here and tell you what it is. We live! Good morning, who's this? Hi, my name is Waleska, a.k.a. a Schmegla Trucker. How you doing, Charlemagne? Peace, Lineska, how are you? Waleska, I'm doing great. Oh, what, Neska? I'm sorry. With an L, Waleska. <laughs> oh, Waleska, Sorry. Waleska, Lord have mercy. Guess what race it is? <laughs> <laughs> Waleska. Hey, go ahead, guess it. Go ahead, what's my race? Uh, black. <laughs> okay, close <laughs> <it> on. <laughs> you did, are you Listen. Dominican? Are you almost too Yes, almost I am. You, you I was Dominican, I guess. I was like, what? How, how yeah. are you, Waleska? I'm doing wonderful. I just wanted to share my happiness with the world. Um, I just got back from my honeymoon. Oh. And, um, but I've been together with my partner for 15 years. We have two wonderful children. And, uh, the biggest thing about this is that my parents separated when I was two. And he, so I came from a broken home and, uh, his parents, like his father was abusive to his mother. So for both of us to come from these households and, um, raise our children in a peaceful, loving home. It's the greatest blessing that God could ever give me. That is incredible. Where'd y'all go for your honeymoon? Uh, Cancun. It was Ooh. it was it was really good. It was a lot of fun. Okay, so you, you think you uh you think you about a week pregnant and don't know it yet? <laughs> oh, now I'm done having kids. My kids are twelve and seven. I'm done. I'm out okay, here trucking. Okay. I drive trucks, so I'm too busy. 
Well, congratulations to you and your boo. Uh, I'm happy that y'all, you know, still together. I'm happy that y'all have a beautiful, healthy family. So, salute to you. Amen. That's Why y'all bang you on her like that? Uh, Jesus uh, Christ. Ray got mad. You mad that she got Ray two kids? <laughs> Ray got mad. <laughs> you married and happy, too. Why are you so angry? <laughs> what know, Ray, you ain't got no reason to be that angry to hang up on that <laughs> young lady. Me. He said good she morning. need to call Who's her man. Good morning. Good morning. This is Jeff. What up, Jeff? How are you? Good, good. Good morning. Charlamagne the God. LL Cool Bay. Good morning. Shout out to Jeff. Shout out to Envy. Yes, sir. Yeah, I'm just trying to get it off my chest, man. I don't like all the hate that J. Cole has been getting off this new this new song, this new single, this new uh song he just dropped, man. It's like Talk he's doing what he's always done the whole time. He's giving his side of the story, he's giving you personal lyrics and putting it in a song. I don't think he was gonna be able to move on without addressing it in a song. Everybody hated when he apologized initially. Then they saw how the battle went and how personal it got. It was like, wow, J. Cole was really smart for getting out of it. And now we're hearing this side of the story. It's like, oh, no, nah, you shouldn't have said anything. It's like they mad that he said he would have won. They mad he said that he had the blood of his friends on him. It's like, what did y'all want this man to say? Y'all thought he was going to get on the track and be like, yeah, I would have lost. That's why I got out. It's like, nah, man, it's, it's still cold at the end of the day. He's still going to with anybody He's in my top 10 and Kendrick's in my top five and it's coming from a Kendrick fan, but Cole's still that dude and he still keep, keeps giving you bars in this song. And I just, it's kind of why, like, especially like the media, they, they went in on him like, yo, what y'all want from the man? Well, this is what I think it is, uh, and I, I, I respect you being a Dreamville surrogate, but what I think that it is <laughs> is the fact that he's like the guy who acted like he'd have beat your ass if he didn't have to go to work in the morning. You know what I'm saying? You ever seen that dude who act like he want to, he, he act like he going to fight, I'm gonna beat your ass. Boy, boy you lucky I got to go to work in the morning. Man, either you're going to swing or you're not. So for him to, like, you know, apologize, which was fine. I respect that move. I think that he did what was best for his, his mental health. But don't write a song acting like you to spun the block, bro. Like, I, I didn't I appreciate that. I don't feel like he was saying he would have spun the block, but he was just like, look, man, from his perspective, this is what it was. And it's like, yo... You know, if, is we going to have to balance and Kendrick shift what hip hop is? Are we going to allow this? Because it's like, no, nah, you should have been about that smoke. And it's like, that's not where he was coming from. That's not who he's been the whole time. And, you know, I, he has been talking greasy the last, like, two or three years, features and everything like that. And it was like, you know what I'm saying? Kind of like, all right, man, it got to fall back. But now he's giving us his perspective. And it's like, you can't really, like, fault the man for telling you what it really was from this perspective. It's like, yo, I think it's a dope song. I think he's giving us bars. I kind of want to hear what Trav got to say about it, too. Yeah, you know what? I haven't heard Trav's opinion, but thank you for calling, brother. All right, that was Get It Off Your Chest. You can call us every morning around this time, 1-800-585-1051, and get it off your chest. Now we got Just With The Mess coming up with Lauren LaRosa. What we got in Just With The Mess, Lauren? We're going to recap the uh, BET Awards that most people didn't know were happening. Jesus Christ. The Hip Hop Awards. It's the world's most dangerous morning show, The Breakfast Club. The Breakfast Club. The world's most dangerous morning show, The Breakfast Club. Charlemagne the God, Lauren LaRosa, DJ Envy is off today. Uh, Jess Hilarious is on maternity leave, so it's just us. Now it's time for Jess with the Mets. News is real. Weather is Jessica Robin Moore. Jess, don't do no lies. 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 She don't spare nobody. Worldwide Jess. Worldwide Mets. On The Breakfast Club. She's a coach of shit. With Lauren. Lauren LaRosa. I'm back. And I got the Mets. Talk, talk to me. I'm not gonna lie. I forgot what segment we was even doing just now. Good morning, Lauren. Good morning. <laughs> what? Did you brush your teeth? Not yet. Oh, my God. Oh. So, the BT Hip Hop Awards went down last night. Uh, I, like a lot of people, did not know it was happening until I saw it hit the timeline. A lot of people were online like, whoa, when did this? When did we not know that this was not happening? What happened? But it was a good show. I did tune in um, once I realized it was happening. Um, Fat Joe hosted it. You know, he's amazing at just all of that, you know, carrying the party on. This is actually his third time hosting the show. The show took place in Las Vegas at Dre's Nightclub. I also saw people making a joke about the fact that the BET Awards were at 
a nightclub, which if you've ever been to the Hip Hop Awards, it is literally a party. So I thought it was fitting. Um, last night, though, big wins for the night. Kendrick Lamar, like, cleaned up. He was nominated for 11 awards. He took home eight, including Lyricist of the Year, Hip Hop Artist of the Year, Song of the Year for Not Like Us, Video Director of the Year with Dave Free for Not Like Us. Like, all of the wins that Kendrick Lamar took home last night, I, D- Drake definitely shouldn't watch the show. Um, who, who else? Who else was going to win? Like who else dominated hip hop? Like Kendrick Lamar dominated hip hop, and he ain't even drop an album. True. I mean, he had a year. Um, Travis Scott also was there, which I was actually surprised to see Travis Scott there. I thought it was a great thing he was there, but I was surprised because normally with the Hip Hop Awards, you don't see super, super big names unless they're performing and they dip in. But he was there because he was receiving an award. He ain't uh, just the Hip Hop Awards. Most most major black superstars don't come to black award shows. Yeah. Now, why, I, why I don't know, but they they don't. Well, especially, I do know because they think White Ice is cold. Especially but, yeah. like Travis Scott, the, the huge names, right? So he won the I Am Hip Hop Award. Um, that was presented to him by Tiana Taylor along with Tyler. Let's take a listen to his speech. First, uh, thank God um, I'm nothing without him. You no, know, I come from this generation where they considered us nowhere near like hip hop, quote unquote. Every day I try to like push the sound and coming in as like a producer, nobody knew what the f- I was trying to do. But I always had this idea and I had this vision um, still to this day uh, to just to take the sound and take things just to the next level. And I'm just so glad that we made it this far. I'm actually going to go do MetLife Stadium tomorrow, and that's actually crazy. And I just want to let everybody know where you come from doesn't really matter. Just what goes on in your brain can take you to the next level and beyond. And um, with true focus and um, true drive and with real surroundings, you can go wherever the you want to go. When the last so, time you heard Travis Scott talk? Uh, last year at no, yeah, last year at the iHeart Radio Music Festival okay. when I spoke to him. I, I couldn't even remember the last. No, I mean like that though, like a public speech. I've never, I don't even remember a time ever hearing that. So I was man. You know what's so funny? When they called me to interview Travis Scott a couple of years ago, I thought the same thing. I was like, he talks. <laughs> like, thought, I've never heard him talk. Yeah, I thought he was like a a mute, like like he can only <laughs> talk in the booth or something. Like he can't talk out in the street. But nah, he can talk. He's a good dude. And you know what's so funny? Uh, they um. He said he, he was going to do MetLife Stadium. So this means they recorded this a while ago. Yeah, they recorded, I think it was like a week or two ago. So you had two weeks to promote and you ain't promote and we still didn't know it was on? I'm going to look what up what date, but, I, but I, it definitely was pre-recorded. Um, but also, too, Breakthrough Hip Hop Artist, Sexy Red won. I thought that was fire. I was at the Hip Hop Awards in Atlanta a few years ago. Remember she had that viral moment where she was dancing in the crowd? But mm-hmm. like she, they played her song, but she wasn't actually a part of the awards. So from then until now, just to see how big Sexy has gotten, it, it's like fire to see um what else oh best hip-hop platform breakfast club was nominated for this arena of things but we didn't win i turned the clubs off (laughs) club shay shay won you can clap for club shay shay yeah club 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 shay 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 won best hip-hop platform um 50 cent won hustler of the year very well deserved uh Missy Elliott won Best Live Performer. Also, of course, very well deserved. Uh, there were also a big, a bunch of really good performances last night. One that I enjoyed very thoroughly was Trina. She performed and she brought out Young Miami on the stage. Let's take a listen. Let's go! I got a I hope you got a four. I want to Let's go. Snap it in my Yeah, shove it down. Hey, baby, hey. what it? Because I can make it, make it. Yeah, I know how. I know how right. And I can spin around and keep it I love that song Man, drop on the clues bottom I love Trina. that Legend. song Legend You hear me? Legend but, I got Trina's book right now I'm, I'm actually about to start reading uh, Trina Trina's new book, actually I just finished it It was great I love I, I love Trina I, Like, Trina I, Me and my group chat always say Trina raised this So reading her book I'm like, That's, man That might be the problem Whoa Read her, <laughs> read her book, and I think you'll think otherwise. She is such a well balanced, bad like what? Don't play she with her. Is. I love Trina. Salute to Trina. I got, I got nothing but the absolute respect for Trina. And you know what? I want to say something about the hip hop uh, platform thing. I think that they need to change the name to cultural platform because the reality is most of these platforms, you know, don't just focus on hip hop. And and a, a platform like Club Shay Shay, that's not even a hip hop centric platform. You understand what I'm saying? Like you can I have you. platform, you can have platforms like uh, you know, Breakfast Club or you know, Sway. Or I don't even remember who else was nominated, but 
we're 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 hip hop centric platforms that uh, have conversations with a whole multitude of different people. Shay Shay is not even a hip hop centric platform, so I think it should be cultural platform. And and he would still win that this year, by the way. Yeah, he had a question. big year. Um, yes. But the the to answer your question, the hip hop awards were pre recorded on October eighth. Y'all had all that time to promote, and y'all ain't promote BET. Well, uh, since October, what's the, what's today's date? Y'all had a week. Today is October sixteenth, but. At least now it's trending. Trina's performance is trending, so shout out to Trina. So, you know, okay. mm-hmm. yeah, that's the end of the mess. Yeah, mm, can we play more Trina? On. What we gotta do right now? We actually have to get ready for front page news. I'm swallowing some oatmeal right now. That's why I ain't gonna brush my teeth yet because I had to do some breakfast. Why is that a pause? I'm swallowing oatmeal. I just, I just, I don't know. You swallowing after Trina. So big. We'll be back up with, be back next with front page news, and we'll be sitting down uh, with Madam Vice President Kamala Harris. We'll be playing that conversation back from yesterday, so don't go anywhere. It's the Breakfast Club. Yep, it's the world's most dangerous morning show, The Breakfast Club. Charlemagne the God, Lauren LaRosa, uh, DJ Envy is out today. Jeff Hilarious is still on maternity leave, but it's time for front page news with Morgan Wood. Good morning, Morgan. Good morning, good morning. So, yeah, former President Trump, he took part in an economic forum in Chicago before heading to Georgia to tape a Fox News town hall with an audience of women that will air at 11 a.m. today. Now, while in Chicago, he sat down for an interview with Bloomberg News and the Economic Club of Chicago and said if elected he will bring companies back to the U.S. and implement what he calls strong tariffs. Let's hear more from former President Trump. We're going to bring the companies back. We're going to lower taxes still further for companies that are going to make their product in the USA. We're going to protect those companies with strong tariffs because I'm a believer in tariffs. But tariffs are two, uh, two things if you look at it. Number one is for protection of the companies that we have here and the new companies that will move in because we're going to have thousands of companies coming into this country. We're going to grow it like it's never grown before. I'm not the highest grade of weed in the dispensary, so when I keep hearing somebody talk about something, I have to look it up. So I'm always hearing about these tariffs, tariffs. Do we understand that a tariff is basically a sales tax raising the price of almost everything that we buy? And we pay those tariffs. Like tariffs aren't paid by other countries. They're paid by us, the consumer. Do we know this? Well, they taught that in social studies. I remember. Oh, okay. I didn't know. And it's been a minute from since social studies class. Well, despite that, polls have shown that voters believe Trump would handle the economy better than Harris if elected, despite data historically showing that the economy has done better under a Democratic under the Democratic Party. Now, uh, former President Trump's rally on he has supposed to rally in Detroit on Friday. Um, he will be in Huntington Place. He's scheduled to speak at the center at 7 p.m. and doors will open at 3 p.m. Of course, Vice President Kamala Harris will also be in the area campaigning on Friday in Oakland County. Voters will decide between the two in less than three weeks. Uh, of course, you know, Michigan remains one of those battleground states but have recently historically have voted blue um switching gears though oh, oh, oh uh, real quick morgan i want to say too being in detroit all day yesterday when i yeah. tell you uh people from detroit are pissed off about donald trump's comments that he made last week when he said uh, oh yeah you know, if, if, if the vice president becomes president um detroit will be i mean america it'll end will up like detroit, detroit. Oh mm -hmm. man, Sal salute to Troy from So Fresh So Clean Barbershop. Uh, I had a conversation with him about it. I had a conversation. I had a conversation with a lot of people about that one line yesterday, and they did not appreciate that mm. at all. Hey, Detroit, what up though? <laughs> <laughs> All right, well, let's switch gears um, to something uh, just a little more sad, but let's go ahead and continue to say her name, Breonna Taylor. Uh, jury selection is underway in the retrial of a former Louisville, Kentucky police officer charged in connection with the death of Breonna Taylor. Brett Hankison uh, was part of the 2020 raid on Taylor's apartment when Taylor's boyfriend, thinking he was being robbed, uh, fired a shot and hit the officer in the leg. Police returned fire, killing Taylor. Hankison didn't shoot Taylor, but allegedly fired blindly into the apartment because he said he thought his fellow officers were being executed. Hankison is charged with civil rights violations and using excessive force. It's the third time he will face trial uh, for this raid. Uh, he was acquitted of state charges and an earlier federal case um, was dismissed when the jury couldn't reach a verdict. So here we go again. Let's say her name, Brianna Taylor. Um, and bringing things home to New York City, uh, Air Mayor Eric Adams is denying m knowing much about the vacation uh, to Japan involving two of his senior staffers who had their phones seized upon their return from that trip. Adams says he doesn't ask where or whom his staffers 
travel. Let's hear more from Eric Adams. I do not sit down with my staffers and say, before you go on vacations, you need to tell me who you're going on with and you need to let me know where you're going. I don't do that. Believe it or not, uh, what people do on their personal private time is, 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 uh, is on them. And normally, I don't ask my staffers. If they come in and say, hey, I'm going to Bermuda, uh, you, you want to give me a couple of bucks to get you some Bermuda rum, then I know they went to Bermuda. Adams Chief Advisor Ingrid Lewis Martin and Deputy Commissioner for Real Estate Services Jesse Hamilton had their personal devices seized at JFK last month in connection to the Manhattan DA's office's investigation into possible corruption involving the city's commercial leases, according to the New York Times. They apparently traveled with a lobbyist who had recently lobbied for Hamilton and the VP of the commercial real estate services firm uh, Cushman and Wakefield, the firm that helps the city secure such leases. Now, when asked to confirm that no no city funds were spent on that trip to Japan. Adam said it was not sponsored by the city. So Adam's con- he continues to hold it down and say, hey, you know what I'm saying? This this, this wasn't me. This was them. Y'all talk to them. Um, and if we have time for one more, I just want to let you guys know that after a review of Don't Ask, Don't Tell policy, the Defense Department is now honorably discharging about 800 service members. The 1993 policy that allowed LGBTQ individuals to serve as long as they didn't publicly state their sexual orientation or gender identity was repealed in 2011. Now, the Pentagon launched a review last year of LGBTQ plus service members records who were discharged with less than honorable status. Um, An honorable discharge status allows for benefits for some of those veterans. So shout out to the LGBTQIA plus whatever you identify as, whoever you identify as for serving uh, our country. I don't care, who, you know, how you identify, because at the end of the day, my punk butt is not going to do it. And so I salute you and um, I hope that you will be able to get that honorable status if you were discharged with less than honorable status. Yeah, you you, you can't identify as a veteran. You either are or you're not. Mm-hmm. OK, you either served this country or you didn't. So salute to all our veterans out there. Absolutely. So that's your front page news. I'm Morgan Wood. You can follow me on social at Morgan Media, M-O-R-G-Y-N-M-E-D-I-A. And for (laughs) more news coverage, follow at Black Information Network and download the free iHeartRadio app. Visit BINnews.com. Talk to y'all later. Happy hump day. Thank thank you, Morgan. Uh, When we come back, we will be playing back some portions of my uh, audio town hall that I had with the Vice President Kamala Harris yesterday. We had an audio town hall called We the People. Okay, and if you missed it, um, we'll be getting it back on for you right now. So don't go anywhere. It's the world's most dangerous morning show, The Breakfast Club. The Breakfast Club. Yes, it's the world's most dangerous morning show, The Breakfast Club. Charlemagne the God here. Now, yesterday, you know we had our audio town hall with the Vice President Kamala Harris. We titled it, We the People, an audio town hall with Kamala Harris, Charlemagne the God, and you. And that went down yesterday in Detroit, so we're going to get it back on for you right now. It's the world's most dangerous morning show, The Breakfast Club. Peace to the planet. Charlemagne the God here uh, with Madam Vice President Kamala Harris. How are you? Very well, Charlemagne. How you doing? Listen, we got 20 days and 60 minutes, so we just need to get to it. I'm with you. Although it's 21 days. How are you? Because you did you did just walk in. You was you was kind of late, so. Well. well, I try to be on time. That did, well, it, apparently I'm 40 seconds late. You're right. Well, you are black. Uh-huh. So. <laughs> okay. Okay. Now, <laughs> now you know uh, one thing they've been saying. A lot of your press hits get criticized. You know, folks say you come off as uh, very scripted. They say you like to stick to your talk. Points and some media says you have that would be called discipline. Oh, uh-huh. okay, Speak okay, but go on. No, I was, I was say, some people <laughs> say you have an inability to fearlessly say who you are and what you believe. I know that's not true, but what, but what do you say to that criticism? And is it fair for SNL to make fun of it? Hasn't Maya Rudolph been wonderful? Yes, I think I, I have nothing but admiration for the comedy and I think it's it's important to be able to laugh at yourself and each other. But what do you say to people in the, say in the spirit of, of obviously comedy and yes. not belittling people as my opponent would do. But what do you, but what do you say to people who say you, you stay on the talking points? I would say you're welcome. Mm-hmm. The reality is that there are certain things that must be repeated to ensure that I have everyone know what I stand for and the issues that I think are at stake in this election. Mm-hmm. And so it requires repetition. You know, some people say that at, if until someone has heard the same thing at least three times, it just doesn't stay with you. So repetition is important. And for that reason, yes, at my rallies, I say the same thing when I go to Detroit as I do in Philly, as I do wherever I am, to make sure that people hear and, and receive what I think are some of the most um, critical issues that are at stake in this election. There has to be a, a high level of anxiety, too, when you have these conversations, though, because you are running for president. 
I mean, you know what? There is certainly a lot of, I, I feel the weight mm-hmm. of the moment and my role. Um, I feel an extraordinary weight of responsibility right now to do everything I can. I'm telling you, Charlemagne, when I go to bed at night, I, I almost every night, in addition to my prayers, will ask, have I done everything I could do today? Mm. It, this is a margin of error race. It's tight. I'm going to win. I'm going to win. But it's tight. And, you know, what is at stake is truly uh, profound and, almost, and historic, many would say. And it's about, you know, some people would say this lofty notion of, of, of supporting and, and preserving our democracy. Mm-hmm. But it, it is about real issues that affect people every day, like whether we're going to maintain a $35 cap on insulin for our seniors, whether we're going to continue to allow Medicare and to negotiate drug prices to bring them down, whether we are going to have, as my opponent would have, a formalized stop and frisk policy. For which he has said, if a police department does not do it, they should be defunded Mm. or not. There is so much at stake. Whether America is going to stand on its principles around the importance of sovereignty and territorial integrity and stand with our allies around the world. Or whether we're going to admire dictators and send during the height of COVID in the pandemic, COVID tests that nobody could get to the president of Russia for his personal use when black people were dying every day. By the hundreds during that time. Yeah, I feel like that one uh, that one has gone over people's heads, the fact that he was sending COVID tests to Putin. I mean, you know, I invite, I don't, your listeners, the mm-hmm. people we know, the number of people who lost their grandparents and parents. Remember what that was like during the height of COVID? And a lot of it, people were scrambling for the resources and needed tests. And Donald Trump, during that time, secretly sent COVID tests to the president of Russia, who, by the way, do not forget, in the 2016 election, because I was a member of the Senate Intelligence Committee when we, when we investigated it, targeted black voters in 2016 with mis- and disinformation to discourage black people from voting in that election. And, and this is just another of the very many examples of who Donald Trump really is yeah, sending, and the danger he presents yeah, to sending, real people. Sending COVID tests to Russia, that doesn't sound very uh, America first at all. But but it's not just you versus Trump, it's you versus misinformation. Yes, that's true. Right, And, and one of the biggest yeah. uh, pieces of misinformation, one of the biggest allegations against you is that you targeted and locked up thousands of, of black men in San Francisco for weed. Some say you did it to boost your career. Some say you did it out of pure hate for black men. Please tell us the facts. What's the facts of that situation? It's just simply not true. And in what public defenders who are around those days will tell you, I was the most progressive prosecutor in California on marijuana cases and would not send people to jail for simple p- possession of weed. And as vice president, have been a champion for bringing marijuana down on the schedule. So instead of it being ranked up there with heroin, we bring it down. And my pledge is as president, I will work on decriminalizing it because I know exactly how those laws have been used to disproportionately impact certain populations and specifically black men. Mm -hmm. Okay. Let's take some, well, not calls. Let's go to the talk back feature. Uh, My question for Kamala is why are we, and I say we because my tax dollars is sending the money, why are we sending money to other countries when we desperately need it in our own country for homeless, housing, resources, for whatever? That is my determining factor if I vote for Kamala or not. That's that's one of the reasons the America First rhetoric resonates because nobody in America would complain about where money was going if American citizens' everyday needs were being met. So what what do you say to that? We can do it all, and we do. Mm. So first of all, I maintain very strongly America should never pull ourselves away from our responsibility as a world leader, and that is in the best interest of our national security and each one of us as Americans and our standing in the world. That being said, we also have an obligation to American citizens, obviously, and people who are here to meet their everyday needs and challenges, which is why, for example, we have done the work in the last four years of bringing down the cost of prescription medication, whether it be $35 a month for seniors for for insulin or $2,000 a year cap on prescription medication. 
what we have done that has been about putting $17 billion in our HBCUs. I am proud to be the first HBCU vice president of the United States. I intend to be the first HBCU president okay. of the United States. Those resources are about sending them to centers of academic excellence that I know them to be. The work that I continue to do is about increasing access to capital for our small businesses. It is about increasing the opportunity for home ownership, knowing that black people are 40% less likely to be homeowners in America. We have a history of legal and, and, and procedural obstacles to that home ownership, starting with the fact nobody got 40 acres in a mule to redlining, to, to issues that this Detroit area and people around the country know to be real. So part of my plan is that we're going to give people a $25,000 down payment assistance to get their foot in the door to buy a home for first-time home buyers. The work that I'm going to do to increase housing supply in America, knowing that that's one of the reasons that rents and housing prices are jacked up, and to work with the private sector, cut through the red tape, and work to build more housing, $3 million before the end of my first term. And I give these examples, and there are many more which I will offer. So, for example, the work that I will do to extend the child tax credit to $6,000 for young families during the first year of their child's life. Because as you and I both know, our families all have a natural desire to parent their children well, but not always the resources. Mm -hmm. So by expanding the child tax credit to the first year of a child's life to $6,000, that gives that young family the ability to buy a car seat or a crib or clothes the things that are so important during that critical phase of that child's development so that they can get on the road and actually have a chance at succeeding. All right, when we come back, we will be playing more from my audio town hall with the Vice President Kamala Harris that we did live from Detroit yesterday, okay? It's The Breakfast Club. Yes, it's the world's most dangerous morning show, The Breakfast Club. Charlemagne the God here. Now, yesterday, you know we had our audio town hall with the Vice President Kamala Harris. We titled it, We the People, an audio town hall with Kamala Harris, Charlemagne the God, and you. And that went down yesterday in Detroit, so we're going to get it back on for you right now. It's the world's most dangerous morning show, The Breakfast Club. Have you seen the clip, uh, Madam Vice President, um, from the Grio. It's, it's, it's a clip that's kind of out of context, and it says uh, that you won't do anything specifically for black people. Have you seen that? Have you? I have not seen that. Well, it's, it's a clip that has you saying that you, you're not going to do anything specifically for black people. Well, that's just not true. And it, it, listen, again, you said it at the beginning of this um, visit, Charlemagne. One of the biggest challenges that I face is missing disinformation. Mm -hmm. And it's purposeful. Because it is meant to um, convince people that they somehow should not believe that the work that I have done has, has occurred and has meaning. My work from the beginning of my career through today has been about, for example, we've talked about it, whether it be on HBCUs, whether it be on healthcare, black maternal mortality, I am singularly, many would say, one of the highest level leaders in our country to bring the issue of black maternal mortality to the stage of the White House to address it. The work that I've done that has been about focusing on my knowledge and my experience and my life experience of knowing the entrepreneurship that we have in the community, the ambition, the aspirations, the dreams, and then tapping into that so that not only has my work been about ensuring that we have some of the lowest black unemployment ever, in our country, but that also knowing that that should be a baseline that everybody has a job mm -hmm. and what we should be invested in is also building wealth in the community and intergenerational wealth. And I have many, many examples of that. But again, um, part of the challenge that I face is that they are trying to scare people away because they know they otherwise have nothing to run on. Ask Donald Trump what his plan is for black America. Ask him what you know. I'll tell you what it is. Look at Project 2025. Project 2025 tells you the plan includes making police departments have stop and frisk policies. The plan includes making it more difficult for workers to receive overtime pay. The plan includes ending the ability of Medicare to negotiate drug prices. You know what we have done? He said he would. We did. Which means that that's how we brought down the cost of prescription medication. His plan includes making it more difficult for working people to get by and to destroy 
our democracy. You know what he says he'll do? Terminate the Constitution of the United States. That's right. Let me remind folks. You know what's in the Constitution of the United States? The Fourth Amendment, which protects you against unreasonable searches and seizures. The Fifth Amendment, the Sixth Amendment, the Fourteenth Amendment, and he's going to terminate the Constitution of the United States, which in most of those amendments, one thing or another was about a movement spurred by black people to ensure that we would be equally protected under the law. Before we go to another talk back call, I want to say uh, th- th- there was a time I had a politician tell me once that if you're running for a national election, it's bad electoral strategy to say you are going to do things specifically for black people, which is why a lot of politicians mm-hmm. don't speak directly to their plans for black people. Is, is, is that a thing? I don't I don't know that that's true. I think that what is true is that I am running to be president for everybody. Mm hmm. But I am clear eyed about the, the, the history and the disparities that exist for specific communities. And I'm not going to shy away from that. It doesn't mean that my policies aren't going to benefit everybody because they are. Everything I just talked about will benefit everybody. Mm-hmm. Small business owners, whatever their race, their age, their gender, their geographic location are going to benefit from the fact that I'm going to extend tax deductions to fifty thousand dollars. Every first-time homeowner, wherever they are, whatever their race, will benefit if they are a first-time home buyer with a $25,000 down payment assistance. Everyone is going to benefit from my plan to extend the child tax credit to $6,000 for the first year of their child's life. That's going to benefit everybody. But I do realize, again, that on the issue of home ownership, for example, black people are 40% less likely to own a home. Mm-hmm. So, Do you... um? You know, uh, do, do you feel like President Obama stepped on your rollout? Because I know you've been working on this black male agenda for for a long time, and you've been doing the the, the outreach, you know, with your what was the Opportunity Economy Tour and yeah. things like that. Yeah. But then he made the statements that he made last week, so everybody thinks this is a reaction to that. Oh no, no, mm-hmm. no, no! I mean, you just have to no, obviously not. I've been doing this for quite some time, including mm-hmm. before I was running for president. Let's uh, go to talk back, Eddie. Hi, I'm Bobby from Georgia, and I have a question for Kamala Harris. Could you please respond to Trump's claim that he's going to use the Alien Enemies Act of 1798 to round up immigrants if he wins the election? This law was last used to put Asian Americans in internment camps during World War II, and I have a sneaking suspicion that if Trump wins, he's going to use this law to put anyone that doesn't look white in camps, and I'm scared. Mm. Yeah, so... You've hit on a really important point and expressed it, I think, so well, which is he is achieving his intended effect to make you scared. He is running full time on a campaign that is about instilling fear, not about hope, not about optimism, not about the future, but about fear. And so this is yet another example. Look what he did in saying that those legal immigrants in Springfield, Ohio, were eating their pets. He and, and by the way, the hypocrisy of it abounds because on the issue of immigration, let's be clear, some of the most conservative members of the United States Congress working with others came up with a border security bill, which was the strongest, toughest border security bill in a long, long time. It would have put 1,500 more border agents at the border. It would have reduced the flow of fentanyl into our country, which is killing people all over our country of every race and background. It would have allowed us to do more work on prosecuting transnational criminal organizations, which I have done in my career. Trump got word that that bill was afoot, knew it would fix the problem, and told his buddies in Congress to kill the bill. And you know why? Because he would prefer to run on a problem instead of fixing a problem. And he's running his campaign in a way that he does these rallies where people, by the way, walk out. And does these rallies to try and instill fear Mm -hmm. around an issue where he actually could be part of a solution, but he chose not to because he prefers to run on a problem instead of fix a problem. And we got to call it out and see it for what it is. All right, when we come back, we will be playing more from my audio town hall with the Vice President Kamala Harris that we did live from Detroit yesterday, okay? It's The Breakfast Club. Yes, it's the world's most dangerous morning show, The Breakfast Club. Charlemagne the God here. Now, yesterday, you know we had our audio town hall with the Vice President Kamala Harris. We titled it, We the People, an audio town hall with Kamala Harris, Charlemagne the God, and you. And that went down yesterday in Detroit, so we're going to get it back on for you right now. It's the world's most dangerous morning show, The Breakfast Club. I, I, before we go to talk back, I want us to say something else. I don't feel like the Biden administration has treated Trump 
like a real threat to democracy. And that's why America doesn't realize how much of a threat he is. It's one thing to say it, but you have to act on it. Don't you believe Merrick Garland should have moved faster to put Donald Trump in prison for leading an attempted coup in this country? Uh, the Department of Justice is, it has independence in terms of how they make those decisions, as they should. And let's also be very clear. Donald, what do you think? Well, no, well, no. Mm-hmm. I, Donald Trump has been very clear that he would weaponize the Department of Justice against his political enemies. He has been very clear that he would take out the independent folks who are in there and put in there instead his loyalists. So understand, again, you talk about, because this brings back to exactly your point about threats to, the, to our democracy. Donald, Dr- Donald Trump would go in to the Department of Justice and manipulate it in such a way that it would be used as a weapon against his political enemies. Yeah, he's going to lock y'all up if he gets back in office. Well, by the way, he's going to. You should look at his words. I don't think that you, as a journalist, should should feel so so sure that. Oh, one hundred percent. I'm out of here. Journalists, judges, others, and you know who does that? Dictators do that. Other countries do that. Which is say that you're going to send, as he has, the military to go and 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 suppress peaceful protesters. That happens in other countries. That's not supposed to happen in America. So do understand when this man says what he says, how that would play out in real time. So why is it okay for him to say he'll lock up his political opponents, but it's not okay for y'all to say he should be in prison when he's actually committed crimes? Oh, I've been very clear. I think that the um, the court should handle that. And I'm going to handle <laughs> November. <laughs> Of course, you handle that. Okay, let's go to talk back, Eddie. What we got? President here. Our men and women in the military are sent to foreign countries to fight for their freedom. Win or lose, Donald Trump has promised to seek revenge. My question is: Will our military be there to fight for our freedom after the election? Should Trump start another insurrection? Mm. Mm. Well, you raise a profound point. That is. Um very much a part of this election cycle in terms of what the American people have a choice right now. So January 6th, Donald Trump incited a violent mob to try and undo the will of the people and undo the results of a free and fair election. That violent mob attacked the United States Capitol. Over 140 law enforcement officers were injured. Some of them were killed. And he has said since then that there will be a bloodbath after this election. He has, on your point about the military, referred to members of our military as suckers and losers. Which is why, by the way, do see the number of military leaders who worked under his administration who are supporting me. And I will point out what everyone knows, which is that the people who worked the closest with Donald Trump when he was president, worked with him in the Oval Office, saw him at play in the Situation Room, his chief of staff, two secretaries of defense, his national security advisor, and his former vice president, have all said he is dangerous and unfit to serve. Mark Milley, the former chairman of the Joint Chiefs of Staff, most recently articulated exactly that point. And again, you know, here's Charlemagne, one of the things that I think is really... um, ironic but at play donald trump through his um his way of trying to name call and demean and divide tries to project as though those things are a sign of strength when in fact the man is really quite weak he's weak it's a sign of weakness that you want to please dictators and seek their flattery and favor it's a sign of weakness that you would demean America's military and America's service members. It's a sign of weakness that you don't have the courage to stand up for the Constitution of the United States and the principles upon which it stands. This man is weak and he is unfit. Mm. So why is everybody sitting around acting like Donald Trump isn't going to plan to steal this election if he loses? Like, you know, Republican officials won't certify the results of the election. We know it's Donald Trump's Supreme Court. Why are people acting like this is going to be a free and fair election? And he won't try to steal it. Well, but those are two different points. Okay. So it will be a free and fair election if we, the American people, stand up for that. You know, I, I see it as this. I think that there, democracy has, it's like two points of nature. One, there's a, a, a fact about a democracy that when it is intact, it, the strength 
that it possesses in terms of the protection of people's individual rights and liberties. When a democracy is intact, we protect your rights and your liberties. Strength. Democracy is also very fragile. It will only be as strong as our willingness, we the people, to fight for it. And that, as much as anything, is what's at play in this election. Fight for our democracy. Flawed though it is, imperfect though it may be, because there are very two real paths right now. The man has told you he intends to terminate the Constitution. The man has told you all these things about his disregard and disrespect for your freedoms and liberty, including the right of a woman to make decisions about her own body. And he hand-selected three members of the United States Supreme Court with the intention they would do exactly what they did. One out of three women in America lives in a, a state with the Trump abortion ban. You know every state except Virginia in the South has an abortion ban. You know where the majority of black women live? In the South. South. Yeah. In those same states that have some of the highest rates of black maternal mortality. And they want to strut around talking about this is in the interest of women and children and they've been silent on an issue like black maternal mortality. But I know the people are aware and clear eyed. And I do believe that on Election Day and early voting in Michigan starts in four days, people are going to go to the polls and they're going to vote to stand up for these principles and to stand up for their rights to freedom and liberty and to live and just be free to be. I believe that. Mm. <sighs> and but, but, but back to Detroit. Can, so can you imagine you go to a city and you say you want the votes of those people, and then you disparage the city. Damn. And that's what he did in Detroit. And he has a tendency Wait. to mention cities that either have a historically black majority population right. or a black mayor. That's right. And that's what he did. He only did that to Detroit because Detroit is 78% black. And he doesn't want America to look like that. Uh, Madam Vice President, thank you. We got to do this again. We're done? Uh, we only, according to I, I just oh, want to keep okay. going. I got more questions okay. for you. <laughs> <laughs> but thank you. I appreciate right. you, Charlamagne. Thank you. Spirit, that's my spirit animal. Gloria, hallelujah, Woods. Okay? I go by the name of Charlemagne the God. This is the world's most dangerous morning show, The Breakfast Club. Uh, DJ Envy is off today. Jess Hilarious is on maternity leave. So it's just I and LL Cool Bay, Lauren LaRosa. And it's time for Jess with the Mess with Lauren LaRosa. News is real, weather is real. Hilarious, Jessica Robin Moore. Jess don't do no lies. Don't do no lies. She don't spare nobody. Worldwide Jess, worldwide mess. On The Breakfast Club. She's a coach of shoes. With Lauren, Lauren LaRosa. I'm back. And I got the mess. Talk, talk to me. Charlotte, you sat down with VP Harris yesterday at I the did. town. We just hall. It. Yes, we yep. just played in it. Um, so you guys and also you could uh, watch on uh the Breakfast Club YouTube channel as well too. Top two moments for you from the interview. Top two moments for me. Mm -hmm. Uh drop one of the clues bombs from my guy Zeke from New Era. I really enjoyed um, Zeke's question. I I enjoyed all the brothers from Zeke's uh, from from Detroit's questions, but I enjoyed Zeke's question a lot. Um, and I I don't know. I got to think about it. I, Zeke is the first one that comes to mind though, but I got to think about the other one. So for me, you got? for me, it was the black church conversation when you asked her oh, why yes. doesn't she speak directly to black people with Pastor um, Kenlock, yes. Reverend Solomon Kenlock Jr. Yes, the reparations yes. question, even though I feel like she still didn't directly answer, but I think it was good to hear her say it should be studied. Um, the Trump being locked up. I love how she was like, I'm going to let the court handle that. Like, baby, I'm going to let them take care of that. Uh, the, I had a lot of, of, of moments that I love from it. Um, I, I wanted to play right now, though, um, out of the interview, the border pushback, because a lot of people give her so much flack for what happened at the border. And I, I think that it was good how you push back on the question and how she had to answer it. Let's take a listen. Doesn't the Biden administration have to take some blame for the border, though? A lot of the blame? Because, I mean, the first three years, y'all did get a lot of things wrong with the border. No, Charlemagne, within hours of being inaugurated, the first bill we passed before we did the Inflation Reduction Act, before we did the Bipartisan Infrastructure Act, before we did the, the, the Safer Communities Act to deal with gun violence, first thing we dropped was a bill to fix the broken immigration system, which, by the way, Trump did not fix when he was president. You can look at every step along the way. We then tightened up the, the asylum application process. We then worked with what we needed to do to secure ports of entry. We did a number of things, including what we did to try and get that border security bill passed. And then also an executive order that has actually reduced significantly the number of illegal crossings and, and tightened up 
what needs to happen in between ports of entry. Now, I like to hear her in this interview talk about the border because even the way she said your name in the opening of that response, it was like, y'all better stop playing with me. I'm tired of having to tell y'all this. I, I think that that energy and that aggression is needed from her right now. And, and well, you know, the, go there's ahead. another part of the conversation where I even said to her, why do you not push back on them labeling you the borders are? Because everybody thinks that's her job. That's actually not her job. Like Biden deputized her we, with a diplomatic mission to evaluate the factors that cause people to leave their home countries in the first place. The Secretary of Homeland Security, uh, whose name I can't pronounce, Ale, Ale, <laughs> Alessandro Mayorkas, uh, he's the person that manages the border. So how she's become the fall person for the border, I, I don't know. I know you so well that uh, we have that clip. Let's take a listen. Congress has to act to fix the immigration system, and it has been broken for a long time. Congress has to act, but it does not help when finally a bar bipartisan group got together to fix it. And Donald Trump told them, hold on, don't do that because it won't it won't help me politically. Mm -hmm. Why do you allow him to call you the border czar when that were, that's not even your that wasn't you know, your I'm not role. giving him permission for that. Oh, oh you're right. But, <laughs> But I mean, you don't push back on it because that wasn't your, that's not that wasn't your role. What, what? Fact checkers have made that clear. Look, uh -huh. if I responded to every name he called me, I wouldn't be focused on the things that actually help the American people. And that's my focus. And um, mm. one of the things I will say, too, is in the beginning of the interview, like just as a person that interviews, I was watching just your strategy on it. I love how you set the tone from the beginning where she couldn't be scripted if she wanted to in this interview because you called her out on it early. So it made her have to like really talk and even her explanation of so many different things I think she talked directly to people regular and people were able to get it one of the things you guys also went into was the disinformation um, that is just out there on the internet one of the biggest things that we saw recently with that was the Janet Jackson um, conversation where people were saying oh Janet Jackson and her brother allegedly don't support Kamala because Kamala prosecuted uh, Michael Jackson and you know that whole narrative around her with black men and prosecution let's take a listen to that Quick question. There's a rumor that Janet Jackson is mad at you because you prosecuted her brother, the late, great Michael Jackson. That's on that's on the Internet. Clear that up for people. That's just not true. I know. Yeah. Wait, I know. On either count. <laughs> <laughs> oh, she, you know, oh, she's not mad at you? Well, either? I mean, I don't know. I gotcha. don't know. I have not talked to her, but it certainly it's not true about her brother. And we all you had, go ahead. You had to see the look in her eyes. She had no idea what I was talking about. Really? Well, I, I love that for her because it'd be, it'd be stuff be so loud on the Internet. And I love that she had no idea. But I will say, um, this stemmed from, so y'all know, um, well, y'all, I'm talking to the listeners, whoever. And back in 2003, when uh, Michael Jackson uh, was uh, charged with child molestation and the administer administering an intoxicating agent, people were saying that because she was the district attorney in San Francisco and he was prosecuted or whatever in Santa Barbara, they were trying to connect it to, but she had no direct involvement in that whatsoever. But I thought that that was a good thing that you brought that up to her because that was big because of the names involved. But you also brought up uh, Obama because that's been a big thing as well too. And I think the way you asked the question to her about him stepping on her rollout, I was like, oh, I want to hear how she answers this. Let's take a listen. Do you feel like President Obama stepped on your rollout? Because I know you've been working on this black male agenda for a long time and you've been doing the, the, the outreach, you know, with your, what was the Opportunity Economy Tour and yeah. things like that. Yeah. But then he made the statements that he made last week. So everybody thinks this is a reaction to that. Oh, no, 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 no. I mean, you just have to. No, obviously not. I've been doing this for quite some time, including mm -hmm. before I was running for president. Love to hear. Love to hear that she's not bothered. But I also think it's important for her to be able to talk about stuff like that because uh, for a while, a lot of us felt like she couldn't talk about stuff when think people that are, you know, before her. So like the Obamas or the Bidens, when things happen, people feel like she has to stay silent. So I love the fact that she was just willing to answer and say, no, I didn't care about that. I'm I'm cool. We good over here. Yeah, I just know how people would uh how people would see that that, that black male agenda, especially after the comments that Obama made. But if you've been paying attention, she's been doing blackmail outreach for a long, 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 long time. And I know for a fact that they were working on this agenda way before uh, Obama made those those comments. So. And shout out to Iceware Vezo. I thought he came up and asked a really good question, too. Um, we, we don't have the time to play it, but he had basically asked her, like, why now? Like, this all seems fake. Like, you just want our vote. And she clarified what you just said, that they've been working on this stuff. This is not anything new. Um, and I know we've had him up there. He up here, he's talked about, you know, why he's weary of, of politicians and certain things. So I thought Man. that was great to include him, too. Bezo told me something after uh, the town hall yesterday. If, if, if that's something he wants to share publicly, he can. But yeah, Bezo, uh, I'll, I'll just say Bezo thoroughly enjoyed uh, the, the conversation. And you know, Bezo was very opinionated about the vice president 
beforehand. For so sure. I, want, I, I really just want to drop one of Clues Bombs for Detroit, man. Detroit is such a special, you know, beautiful black city, man. Salute to um, Reverend Solomon Kinlock Jr. Salute to Zeke from New Era. Salute to Icewear Bezo. Salute to Eric Thomas. Salute to Sharon, who's the PD at uh, WJLB in Detroit. Salute to Bushman. And salute to Chanel Dominique. Drop one of Clues Bombs for Chanel. And I, I hit Chanel and asked her to bring a room together of some of Detroit's finest, and 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 she did that, man. Mm-hmm. So salute to Chanel and uh, Sh- Sharon for really, really putting on for Detroit yesterday at the Audio Town Hall. Yeah, so congratulations on that. My mom said that this was one of Kamala's best interviews. So, and I think a lot of people feel that way. So shout out to you know you for handling that well. well That's thank the mess. you, Ella Cool Bay. You're welcome. I don't trust you when you're nice. I really don't. Ooh. I almost started to say something. But, uh, (laughs) for after the hour, we need the Indiana State Police to come to the front of the congregation. We'd like to have a word with them, please. It's the Breakfast Club. Don't be out here acting like a donkey. Hee haw, bitch. Hee haw. It's time for Donkey of the Day. Mm -hmm. I'm a big boy. I can take it. If you feel I deserve it, ain't no big deal. I know Charlamagne guy gonna have some funny sleep out of his mouth. This guy say something you may not agree with doesn't mean I'm mean. Who's getting that donkey? That donkey. That donk, 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 donk. Donkey of the day, right there. <laughs> it's the Breakfast Club, bitches. You can call me the donkey of the day, but like, I mean no harm. Yes, donkey of the day for Wednesday, October 16th goes to the Indiana State Police in Indiana. Uh, you all must really like doing paperwork, okay? In fact, before we move on, I want to salute uh, all the cops out there who have bigger fish to fry, all the law enforcement officials on this planet who don't stick to the rivers and lakes they are used to because they're too busy chasing waterfalls. We don't discuss that enough. Okay, TLC told us not to chase waterfalls, but sometimes those rivers and lakes are too small and we don't need to stick to them. We need to chase the big ass waterfalls and there is a lot of cops that understand that. What do I mean when I say that? Well, if I was a police officer and I pulled somebody over for something petty, uh, something small, I don't even want to call it a petty crime. Just like an infraction, like like failing to pay fines related to minor traffic violations or parking tickets. If I was a cop and I pulled someone over for that, I would be like, hey, man, go home, pay your ticket. If you don't pay your ticket, I'm locking your ass up next time I catch you, okay? There, there are just so many nonviolent, low-level infractions that usually end up with people being jailed, but it's usually things people shouldn't be in jail for. And that is why I am giving the Indiana State Police donkey a day today because it was a dark and lonely night. A state trooper was patrolling the southwestern part of the state when he spotted a 51-year-old man named John McKee driving a little Jeep with no lights. That is a reason to pull somebody over, but there's a lot more to the story. So let's go to WAVE News for the report, please. The man is 51-year-old John McKee from Vincennes, Indiana, and he was arrested for driving a Power Wheels Jeep at night while under the influence of marijuana and meth. Now, at the beginning of this video, you can see McKee pull off the road in that blue Power Wheels Jeep. The officer in the video then stops him, soon performs several field sobriety tests, which McKee fails. He's then arrested and taken to the hospital for several blood tests and take a listen to his reaction when he finds out he's being charged with DUI. DUI. That's still back. That is still a vehicle. No, I'm not. That is still a vehicle. I was talking about that old. You talked to the wrong person. Oh, man. Oh, man, that's all I have to say about that. McKee was later charged with operating a vehicle with a prior conviction, which is a felony. He's since been released. Pretty crazy. Yeah, it was. All right. Thanks so much, Ward. Now, I know what you're thinking. Uh, How the hell did he fit into a power wheel at his big age? Okay. Uh, There's two of those in my house. My nine-year-old and six-year-old have one. And if I could sit my thick ass in one of those power wheels and drive it, I would. They look so fun, but I can't. So how the hell was John McKee able to do that? That's number one. Number two, I know what you're thinking. What grade of weed was he smoking? I want some. Or was it the meth and Mary all I need combo platter that made him say, let me get in this power wheel and hit the road, okay? He must have been so high that the power wheel looked like an actual Jeep to him. It must have looked like an actual car, okay? That's why he got in it and took off down the road. I've been high like this before, okay? When I was much, much, much younger. And when you're this high, you can be speeding and think you're going slow. Or you can be going slow and think you're speeding. I wonder, did the Indiana State Police ask him, sir... Do you know why we stopped you? 
because the reality is they don't even know why, why they stopped him. If you stop somebody in a power wheel, you got to be wondering what the hell's going on. I would have paid, paid to see that. Uh, John McKee was probably so high he had no clue he was even being stopped. But anyway, listen, Indiana State Police, I understand locking him up on the drug charges. I understand locking him up on the public intoxication. I even understand him getting locked up for operating a non-street legal vehicle on public roads. But where I draw the line is a DUI. Okay, giving a man a DUI because he's driving a power wheel high off meth and weed is insanity. This man posed no threat to the public. What was he doing? Seven miles per hour in a 55? The whole point of DUIs is people are drunk operating vehicles that can actually kill you. I don't even think power wheels go fast enough to kill bugs that run into the windshield. Okay, the worst part of this story is that some poor child no longer has a power wheels Jeep because I'm sure it was impounded. Imagine being a cop doing paperwork for this. This is why I said earlier, sometimes you have to not stick to the rivers and lakes uh, that you're used to and chase the waterfalls. This, was, this arrest was a lake, okay, more like a river that somebody cried and someone else should have built a bridge over and the Indiana State Police should have got over it because this was nonsense. Please give the Indiana State Police the sweet sounds of the Hamiltons. Oh, now you are the donkey mm. of the day. When you sober up, how do you explain that? You don't. You try to get high again. <laughs> you get high again to forget the of stupid... all the things you ride in, like what? A goddamn power wheel. It really don't make no sense. <laughs> just like my microphone falling off, just now don't make no sense. I'm going to fix it though. Microphone um, falling off, you falling off. <clears throat> it's crazy. Um, anyway, <laughs> uh, yes, yesterday we had an audio town hall with the vice president, Madam Kamala Harris. And one thing I loved about the town hall is uh, the talkback feature that we use. You know, the talkback feature, I told you, if you go to uh, the iHeart podcast page, iHeart radio app, go to Breakfast Club podcast, tap the microphone, you could have sent in uh, your questions. We had thousands and thousands of questions. Definitely couldn't get to all of them um, within an hour. But I do want to thank everybody who used the talkback feature. And I want to thank everybody from Detroit who was there. You know, I shouted them out earlier. Pastor Kenlock, uh, Zeke from New Era, Iceware Vezel, Eric Thomas, um, Sharon, the program director, Bushman, all of those individuals. But I want to know what, 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 what you, the listeners, thought of the conversation. Just from, you know, hearing it. What did you think uh, of, of the audio town hall? What did you think of what you heard this morning on The Breakfast Club from the Madam Vice President? So can we open the phone lines, LL Cool Bay? We should. Yeah, we should. 1-800. What'd you say? I was going. Go to, I was going to read you a text. My mom said. I thought that. What she it, said. She said, <laughs> Charlene. <laughs> Charlene has done the best interview of Kamala Harris that I've seen yet. Thank God for Charlene. Long live him and all of his crew. I know that's right, Charlene. Did she say? Did she talk about how handsome I am? Did she say anything about that? No, I think she. Usually, I think she missed that part. You know, she wear glasses. She might not have them on. That's not true. She she, she's, that. she's told me I'm a very handsome man. So, I'm, I, and I know she said that again in the text. And I know you hating. <laughs> and I know you don't want to relay that message. Okay, but it's okay. It's okay. One eight hundred five eight five one zero five one. Reach out and touch us right now. Tell us what you thought about the We the People Audio Town Hall with Madam Vice President Kamala Harris. It's the Breakfast Club. The Breakfast Club. It's topic time. Call 800-585-1051 to join into the discussion with The Breakfast Club. Yep, it's the world's most dangerous morning show, The Breakfast Club. Charlemagne the God, Lauren LaRosa, DJ Envy uh, is off today. And, you know, Jess Hilarious is still on maternity leave. But we're talking about the audio town hall, We the People that uh, I did yesterday with the Madam Vice President Kamala Harris. Salute to everybody who used the talkback feature to submit your questions. Uh, but we want to hear from y'all, the listeners right now. You know, just want to know what you thought uh, about the information that was presented during the audio town hall yesterday. Who's on the line, Red? Hey, good morning. What's going on, uh, LL Cool Bay and uh, Charlemagne? Good morning. What's happening? What's your name? Hey, uh, my name's Chan Man. It's actually Chandler. But, hey, Sh real quick, I just want to say, Charlemagne, I thought you did a fantastic job on that interview. I, uh, great talking points. You touched on the points that I feel like a lot of us are thinking about. Felt like you kept the composure, but you still were touching on uh, serious topics. I, I thought you did a great job. I started listening to it last night when I got off work and listened to it again this morning. So, yeah, I just thought you did a fantastic job. 
What'd you think? What'd you think of uh, the substance of the conversation, though? Did it move the you in any way? Fantastic. I thought Kamala did a great job answering the question. One of my favorite parts was uh, you know, you said she was scripted, and she said, "No, nah, I'm disciplined." And that you know, because that's something we think about. Also, you brought up the topic of the San Francisco prosecutor situation, and uh, also the Obama step on question. That was, that was a fantastic thing too. You know, I just thought it was a great interview. And I really think this helped the campaign a whole lot. Oh, thank you, brother. I appreciate it, man. Thank you for listening. Absolutely. Could I throw in a quick plug? Of course. New Children's Book by Chandler D. Hayes. Langston makes his Cooler Made Adventure. Uh, it's on Amazon, Barnes & Noble. Just about a little boy that starts a Cooler Made or a drink stand. Oh, absolutely. Thank you, brother. Appreciate you. Good morning. Who's this? Trey from Norfolk. Trey, what's up, Trey? What's happening? Good. What's good, Charlotte? What's good, Laura? Good morning. Good morning to the Breakfast Club. Good morning. Thank um, you. What you thought of the uh, audio town hall with Vice President think, Kamala Harris last night? I think it was awesome. Um, you know, she did a she did, you did a really good job asking her some very pointed questions and not letting her off the hook with some of the things that she's been sticking to her stripped on. Um, I do think though she could benefit from stepping back from a lot of the, the political stuff. Like you said, the stripped stuff we've heard it a lot. And as an independent, that's not what's ringing home to us. Like, even after the audio town hall, that's not... She answered a lot of questions that, that we had, but I think just having a regular conversation, like, look, this is what the heck is going on with our country. Get away from the political talks, because we hear that every four to eight years. What had Obama, what had us so hyped about voting from him is when we hear from him, it wasn't always just the political points, but it was actual conversations and it was just actual talking that, that was had to the community outside of just the black community. And then when she does that, that's when she'll see that 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 hype and that momentum that she had post and pre um democratic convention like come back again and especially she'll start seeing that reflected in the polls. But that's just my that's two a, cents. I think you did a wonderful job. That's a great point. I I, I wonder about that, right? Because I, I be thinking to myself sometime, did Obama put too much sauce on it? Because you know his whole campaign was about hope and change and i don't know if you saw him last week in pennsylvania he was basically saying like look man you know a lot of people don't want to vote for us because they feel like it's not going to make a difference and he said you're right they're not we're, we're not going to eliminate poverty we're not going to get rid of all the problems with race we're not going to prevent every bad thing from happening in this country but we are people who care who can make your life a little bit a little bit better to me that's more of a realistic message than you know we can change everything and hope oh, you yeah, can nah, believe like, in like it. Said, man, I, that, that part of it, that's just like politics part, right? We heard that every mm -hmm. four to eight years that, no, we can change positive hope and all that and all that good stuff. And I'm trying to, you know, not curse anything like that. But what I'm saying is just more so having like the a swag of conversation. It like if me and you was talking on the streets about, you know, what's going on in the political environment, we're not going to stick to a script. We're going to just have a regular conversation like, look, this is what's gotcha. going on with the border. This is going on with the economy. And that is what she needed. I don't, the soft part of it, the hope part of it, that's is good for like, you know, middle America. But for us, us independents, us as in the middle and people that's really, really focusing outside of the, the political talking points, just have a conversation. See if those people get away from the, the, the talking points and just really have that conversation. I think when she goes, and maybe if she comes back on the Breakfast Club or when she goes to Joe Rogan, if she does that, that's what's going to help her versus just the, you know, like the, the, the same old I I'm middle you. class. But, you know, and then get away from I that got and you. get back to having real conversations. I agree. I got you. Thank you, I my brother. I think that's why it resonated so much with a lot of people. Like the minutes that she, the time she did do that, it was like, oh, like this is refreshing. Like she's a person. She knows what's going on. 1-800-585-1051. We're taking your calls on the audio town hall. We the people with Madam Vice President Kamala Harris that we did yesterday on iHeartRadio. It's the Breakfast Club. If y'all talking about it, you know we talking about it. It's topic time. Call 800-585-1051 to join into the discussion with the Breakfast Club. Yep, it's the world's most dangerous morning show, The Breakfast Club. Charlemagne the God, Lauren LaRosa, a.k.a. LL Cool Bay. DJ Envy is off today. Jess Hilarious is on maternity leave. But we are here talking about uh, the We The People audio town hall that I did yesterday with Madam Vice President Kamala Harris on iHeartRadio. Uh, we're taking your phone calls on the situation on the call on the audio town hall. Who we got on the phone, right? Good morning. Uh, Lanasia. Oh, it's Lanasia. What's up, Lanasia? How are you? 
I'm good. How are you? I'm blessed, black, and highly favored. So, so I enjoyed the interview. I just feel like she should have went more in depth with things, like um, telling us how she thinks the court is going to handle him um, if they prosecute him. Let us know, like, exactly what she means by, like, things. Like, just get more in depth with things. It seems like she's, like, afraid of talking to us. Like, it seems like she's afraid of opening up to us. I think she's afraid. Like, I just feel like I, I need that- more. Yeah, it's, it's certain situations that they don't really go deep on. There was a part of the conversation where I even asked her, why are you, why can't y'all say Trump needs to be in jail, but Trump has no problem saying he's going to lock all right. y'all up? <laughs> like, yeah. Right. Yeah, that's yeah a, I just that's feel like she should have said more. Like, what she's going to do more about, like, getting the illegal immigrants that's hurting us out? Like, what are you going to do about what's in here now? What are you going to do mm. if you get elected and... Donald Trump starts this riot again. Like, what are you going to do to help us? Like, you're telling us it's not going to happen, but how? Mm. Well, this is just one conversation. She's got a lot more. She's sitting yeah. down with Fox uh, Fox News yeah. today. So we'll hear a lot more things over the next few weeks, I'm sure. Thank you for calling. You feel like she's going to be as uncomfortable with Fox News, though, as she was with you? I feel like Fox News, is she going to be back buttoned up? I don't know. It's a good question. I, 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 you know what it is? I, I'm, I, this is just my personal opinion. I think that she operates very well when she's angry, if that makes sense. You know what I'm saying? Like when she when 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 you when you say something that moves her and and like she's already got that fire in her. Mm-hmm. She's like the incredible hawk. She can unleash it at any time. Yeah. And I think uh I think a platform like Fox News might bring that out of her. When Big Kamala <laughs> come out, because it was That's a couple times I was like, Oh, she gonna reach across that table. You better relax. I was there when she telling Trump I'll eat your lunch. Uh, uh, Putin, uh, Putin, Putin said he'll eat your lunch. You know what I mean? When she's telling the hecklers in, 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 in Michigan, hey, relax. Like, mm-hmm. so, there's, it, it's there. It's there. Uh, good morning. Good morning. Morning, everybody. How you doing? Good morning. What's up, brother? Uh, yeah, it's, this is Jordan from Bermuda, man. I, I listened to the uh, town hall yesterday, and I want to say it was really good. I liked how you guys pulled that off, gave her the opportunity to speak, without, you know, to speak candidly. And I think she's going to be a good pick. Um, also, this is important for the world, not just important for America. You know, the world is watching. Progress, um, one step forward, two steps back if, if everybody's going to vote for Trump. Thank you, my brother. The, f- the full version of the conversation is on, on YouTube. It's on the Breakfast Club YouTube page. And uh, if you want to listen to it in the audio form, it's on the Black Effect iHeartRadio podcast network. I want to tell uh, you... Um, yes, ma'am. Yeah, right now, ha- ha- uh, hashtag Black is trending with 1.3 million posts, number 21 across Twitter or X uh, worldwide. Uh, and it's it's all of the points where Kamala spoke directly about either being Black, the Black Church, the when she talked about Trump. I'm sorry, Trump talking to the people in Detroit. Anything that was when she got into like actual like her Blackness, being Black. Speaking directly to Black men, all that stuff is trending within that because people wanted to hear. It. They want to be spoken directly to. Wow. Wow. Well, I want to salute once again everybody in Detroit, that black ass city. I mean, very special place, man. Salute to Pastor Kinlock. Uh, salute to Zeke from New Era. Salute to Iceweb Bezos. Salute to Eric Thomas. Uh, salute to Sharon, the program director at WJLB. Salute to Bushman. Salute to Chanel Dominique. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Chanel. Thank you to all of those folks in Detroit uh, who made that event extra special yesterday, man. And go check out the We the People Audio Town Hall. The visuals are up on our Breakfast Club YouTube page, like I just said, and the podcast is up on um, the Black Effect iHeartRadio podcast network. Okay? Okay. And it's in full, so the question that got cut off is on there as well. Uh, we got Just with the Mess coming up. LL Cool Bay. Uh, we do. We gonna um, get into... Where are we going next? It's, ooh. We gonna get into uh, Life Jennings. Life Jennings called out Tiny Desk yesterday, and I had to reach out to my Tiny Desk uh, reps and, and see what was going on over there for life. Alright. That's what we are gonna talk about when we come back. It's The Breakfast Club. The Breakfast Club. It's the world's most dangerous morning show, The Breakfast Club. Charlemagne the God, Lauren LaRosa, DJ Envy is off today. Jess Hilarious is on maternity leave, but it's time for Jess with the Best with Lauren LaRosa. News is real, weather is real. Hilarious, Jessica Robin Moore. Jess don't do no lies. Don't do no lies. She don't spare nobody. Worldwide, Jess. Worldwide, Matt. On The Breakfast Club. She's a coach of shoes. With Lauren, Lauren LaRosa. I'm back. And I got the mess. Talk to me.
So really quick before we get into the rumors, um, I'm sorry, before we get into Just With The Mess, I want to uh, just send some love to Ananda Lewis, who was a former VJ at MTV. She had announced a few years ago that she was dealing with cancer. And recently she sat down with CNN in a discussion about cancer and her cancer journey. And she revealed that her cancer has now progressed from stage three to stage four because oh, she decided not to undergo a double mass mastectomy um and basically like she she's always talked about like being you know afraid of like the radiation and just some of the different things that go with the treatment so i just wanted to send her some love i've been through a cancer battle with my mom and it was i was so scared i it took me about maybe three weeks two weeks to convince her to go through with treatments because she was very scared of what it would do so you know it it it, it happens but my mom was stage four and my mom is alive and well today. So I'm sending her a prayer and, and you know, just if she hears this or whoever, it is is not over. The fight is not won. I mean, the fight can be won because God has a last say so. And I know that That's firsthand. Right. So I definitely I send the healing energy to Ananda Lua. Yeah, I wanted to take the time to do that. Now, yesterday, Life Jennings uh, posted something that picked up pretty viral. He had posted that he reached out to Tiny Desk last month and they told him that he was not a big enough celebrity for their show. You know, Tiny Desk is a show where you do live performances. Absolutely. He says, so thank you to Unplugged for still believing in me. So I guess he has an Unplugged, which is kind of the same thing, but Tiny Desk has become a lot more popular. Uh, he must have that coming down the line. People were going crazy. I know Shade Room posted like a Don't Forget, Life Jennings had the hits tribute to him. Uh, people were arguing whether he should have been given the Tiny Desk because the music is good, whether he shouldn't have been given it. I reached out to Tiny Desk because I wanted to know, like, I, you know, if, if Life Jennings is, is there to perform, I think the music would be good too if he's up to it. And so why not? So I, I reached out to Tiny Desk and a rep told me that the NPR music team curates the Tiny Desk concert lineup using their editorial discretion to ensure that the music is this uh, includes discovery and inclusion they showcase emerging talent as often as well as new as well uh, emerging new talent as well as known artists the team gets pitched hundreds of hundreds of artists both big and small being a big celebrity is no guarantee to get in the tiny desk but it doesn't disqualify you either often it's about the timing of an artist's career and their schedules they said that their team is small but limited capacity to film they do about 10 shows per month and unfortunately they couldn't accommodate they can't accommodate every every artist that wants to perform so it seems like he did reach out i did double back and say was he specifically told he was not big enough at the moment um no response on that yet but it seems like they're just saying they couldn't accommodate him they have the other things planned so it sounds to me like somebody at tiny desk just wasn't uh culturally aware of, of 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 life Jennings catalog. That's all. And I think now that you know he put that out there and they're seeing the reaction from people, they're like, whoa, maybe we messed up. Maybe that's how they are feeling. Because I feel the same way. I'm like, if he can get up there and, and the mic can be on, that's going to be a great tiny desk. His music is amazing. Yeah, well, Life Jennings can sing his ass off. And, and he's a great live performer if you've ever seen Life Live. I mean, I, I, I think I've seen Life Live. This is back in the day, but now nah, he, 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 he gets busy. Well, we'll see what happens with that. I'll, I'll be following that to see. Because remember, la the last person who uh, posted something virally about Tiny Desk was Juvie, and it happened. So, But it was the opposite, right? Juvie didn't know who the hell Tiny Desk was. Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> it was the opposite. Now, this next little bit of this segment, I'm going to call Sis with the Sports. Look at the Bob, Charla. Sis with the Sports. You know the sports right. broadcasters yeah. always have the good bobs. Mm -hmm. That Bob don't look secure. Whoa, relax. It is very secure. If you didn't Shout have those headphones Ray. on, it would fall off. Shout out to Jamie Ray. Very secure. So, Devontae Adams in Sports News, uh, this trade has been all over headlines. It's been called one of the splashiest trades in team history. So, the wide receiver was traded to the Jets on Tuesday. Now, this trade will mean that he gets to reunite with Aaron Rodgers, and ESPN has called them the most dangerous duo. So, people feel like this is the Jets trying to stack their hand for a Super Bowl. And there, people are also wondering when his debut is going to be because he was out with a hamstring injury. He sat out like three games. But now it's been reported that he's feeling much better. So people want to know when that's going to happen. It is being reported that he'll probably debut with the team uh, Sunday against the Steelers. Now, the controversy around this, or not the controversy, but just some conversation around it. I like to always get to the T in the sports. Uh, is that this might have been, the, the people feel like the hamstring, the whole hamstring injury and sitting out. And then the fact that he lowered his salary cap this season to $3.21 million was because he wanted to get to the Jets. That was all just one big play. So, we'll see what happens. Brad, I know you're a big Jets fan. 
I mean, you excited I'm, about this? I'm excited. I mean, the Raiders were bad, so anybody <laughs> want to get up out of there. Well, but, go ahead. I mean, Adams is nice to have, but I, I don't think it ensures that Jets going to win a Super Bowl. Dang, yeah, even yeah, as a he, fan? No? It's, it's like a, I don't know, so nice let me know. Have, but it's not going to make a big difference. I mean, you still need pieces on defense. The offensive line is bad. I mean... Yeah, and it sound good. Y'all acting yeah, like uh, good. Aaron Rodgers. Y'all acting like Aaron Rodgers, not seventy three years old. Yeah, that's okay. True. And Devontae Adams, and he he a little long in the tooth as well. Even though I would <laughs> love to have him on the Cowboys, but being that he's not a Cowboy, I don't give a damn about well, this trade. The owner, you the only person, because even I had to care, and I don't even y'all know I don't even have. Well, I was gonna say I don't have a team, but now the Eagles are my team. Um, so oh what? Anyway, well, that makes sense. You are from Delaware, so you should be an Eagles fan. A, a, a mention as well to Amari Cooper was traded to the Buffalo Bills. That was a big one that people were like all excited about as well too. That's now, a man that we should have never let go in Dallas, but that's a whole other. It seems like the Cowboys don't know what they should or shouldn't be doing. We, and you know what? You know what? You're absolutely right, but you're not allowed to say absolutely that. right because like I'm saying the sports. I'm cis with the sports. No, only only if you're not. That's like saying the N word and you're not black. Okay, don't talk about us Cowboys Ooh. fans. Only we can talk about us. Want to hear me say Cowboys no more? Now, the Super Bowl, speaking of, and Super Bowl news. So, it was announced yesterday, Roger Goodell said that the NFL is going to be continuing their relationship with Jay-Z and Rock Nation. I feel like we should drop a bomb for that. That is a major, you know, I mean, Jay-Z's been doing an amazing job. The deal was struck back originally in uh, 2019. They struck the deal with the NFL, Rock Nation did, and it was valued at $25 million over five years. There is no report right now on what this new one may be worth, but I can only imagine because he's done a lot for the Super Bowl since 2019. Um, It was announced yesterday, too, that the Super Bowl 2028 is going to be in Atlanta. You know why I'm excited about that? Why? That's just enough time for me to learn how to strip because inflation is hard. Girl, you're gonna be how? When? When is it? <laughs> what, what, what year is this? Why what you gotta go to age? Well, I'm just saying, what year is this? The age, the age has nothing to do with me being able to <laughs> figure out how to recover 40. from inflation. <laughs> Nobody want to see that at <laughs> forty. <laughs> I do well. feel like I do feel like Atlanta needs an adult contemporary uh, script club though. Like I like where, where they wow, are. Wow, you trying to put me? In, you trying to put me in a nursing home with strip clubs? <laughs> yes. You, <laughs> you know want me to saying? be up there with my velcro straps? It's crazy. Yes, last, last time I was in the strip club, I was in Magic City, and I, you know, you just don't feel right tipping them young gals. I need to be. I like. I need to be in there with some forty and ups. You know what I'm saying? So, and you be right in the middle. And what year is it? I would be young in there. I'd be. I'd be fresh meat in there. The, the old head strip club. Twenty twenty eight. Twenty twenty eight. Twenty twenty eight. Oh yeah, you you be close to forty. <laughs> <laughs> That's you know what I want oh, you, you know to have what? a better I want I was just about man. to say you know what by that time I won't have to I'm, I'm what no but as yeah, soon as I, I heard it I thought like the I know Atlanta and people who've been feeling this inflation and all that in Atlanta they probably was hyped to hear this because the last time that like whenever major events come to Atlanta it's so much money put into the tourism the social life and all that so I know they they love to see it coming and listen how long is Jay Z and Rock Nation partnership did they say how much longer it's for with the, the NFL the current one. Yeah, the new one, the one that they just did. Did they say how long? No, there's, how, the details aren't announced yet. He just announced that it, they, they were going to continue working with them. But how long and for how much money, I don't know that yet. Rock Nation should have been petty and put out a press release that said, Jay-Z and Rock Nation will be back to give you all something to enjoy and complain about. Okay? Because <laughs> you Negroes be so confused. Y'all, we, y'all, y'all complain hey. about the Super Bowl halftime performances, but then love them when they come on. I mean, isn't that what... that Like, that's just how life goes. No, that's just how Twitter goes. <laughs> okay. I was, yeah, you're right. You're right. Uh-huh. It makes it good. That was just with the mess with Lauren LaRosa. Thank you, Lauren. I didn't get to get to the real Olympic sport, the the Victoria's Secret fashion show, but I'm going a, I'm to a, I'm a leave y'all with that. I'm going to leave y'all with that was the real oh, Olympic that. sport. Google it. Well, that's the uh, the new sport is the plus size models trying to fit their, their big asses in them little ass Victoria's Secret panties. We got to go. This. Sis with the sports, we got to go. <laughs> Wrap it up. You're not about to do the, that to my inclusive mommies. We got the People's Choice mix up next. It's the Breakfast Club. Yes, it's the world's most dangerous morning show, The Breakfast Club. Charlemagne the God, Lauren LaRosa, DJ Envy is off today. Just Hilarious is on maternity leave. Uh, how you feeling, LL Cool Bay? I feel great. I feel blessed. Shout out to my Uncle Timmy. It's his birthday today, so I'm going to see him today. Happy birthday. 
Salute to Uncle Timmy. And uh, I want to salute everybody that's going to be at New York Comic Con this weekend. I will be there this Friday, October 18th at 3.45 p.m. in room 1C03 having a conversation about my upcoming graphic novel, The Black Illuminati, okay, which may or may not be based on a true story. Uh, my man Rob Markman is going to be the moderator. My man Axel Alonzo is going to be on the panel. He's the former editor-in-chief of Marvel Comics, now the editor-in-chief of AWA Comics. My man Dennis Cohen will be there and we'll be there talking all things Black Illuminati so I'll see you 3.45 p.m. on Friday October 18th in room 1C03 at the Jacob Javins Center for New York Comic Con this Friday okay and I want to thank everybody who tuned in to We The People, the audio town hall we did yesterday with Madam Vice President Kamala Harris, um, everybody that participated in our talk back feature. You know y'all can, we use that feature all the time too. We're going to start oh, using it more. I thought it, it was more. new. It, it is, but it's, well, we've had it for a while. It's just something that we don't incorporate into the Breakfast Club as much as we should. But, you know, anytime y'all got questions about anything that's on the show, just go to the iHeartRadio app. Go to the Breakfast Club podcast, tap the microphone, and send in your questions, man. And once again, salute to everybody in Detroit who pulled up yesterday. Salute to uh, Sharon, the PD of WJLB in Detroit. Salute to Bushman. Um, salute to my man, uh, uh, Troy, who came and cleaned me up yesterday with, with, with a nice little haircut and shave from So Fresh, So Clean Barbershop. I got to salute uh, Chanel, Dominique, Icewear Bezo, Eric Thomas, Zeke, and Pastor Kinlock, okay? Pastor uh, Solomon Kinlock Jr., man. So thank you to everybody we saw in Detroit yesterday. And salute to Coach Thea Mitchum, all right, for always just, just holding it down like she does, man. She she keeps all of this together. So thank you. And when we come back, it's the positive note. It's the Breakfast Club. It's the most dangerous morning show, the Breakfast Club. Charlemagne the God, Lauren LaRosa, DJ Envy is off today. Jess Hilarious is on maternity leave, but Envy should be back tomorrow. Uh, Jess should be back soon as well. Lauren, you're going to be on the road this weekend, right? Yeah, me and Envy are going to North Carolina a and for the homecoming. And I want to say, so it's Saturday, October 19th. Uh, it's at the Truist Stadium. We're doing the Let's Turn Up the Vote event. It's powered by <laughs> Quaji Heath. I called him Quaji Health before. I don't know why I made him seem like a place you go see the lady at. My bad, bro. But it's Quaji Heath and Mark is Johnson. They bringing us the Jiho. It's my first Jiho experience on North Carolina a &T. Please talk to me nice. Me and Envy gonna be there. I'm really excited this Saturday. I'll actually be there Friday, and but Saturday is the event where you can come and Envy will be DJing. I'm gonna be talking to y'all about why y'all need to vote, all that good stuff. And who are these hoes again? Jiho, greatest homecoming of wait, what is it? Greatest homecoming ever. Sorry, Jiho. It's my first one. It, that's like Jiho. the Jiho. Jiho, not who these hoes again. Ain't about nobody these think prestigious that through, HBCU huh? graduates. <laughs> what? I think y'all should just sound that one out. That just sounds crazy. <laughs> the greatest hoes ever. Okay, by the way, get a lot of people to that homecoming. This homecoming got the greatest hoes ever. <laughs> Yo, well, we will be there. So shout out to Kwaji Heath and Marcus Johnson. What you mean? That was not a time for you to say we will be there. <laughs> oh, After I, say oh, this I just called got me the Envy Hoes. Ever. Sorry, Lord I didn't have yeah. mercy. <laughs> I didn't think that through. Jesus Christ. Uh, positive note, stop letting your potential go to waste because you don't feel confident or ready enough. People with half your talent are making serious waves while you're still waiting to feel ready. And I want to tell you something that Bishop T.D. Jakes told me one time. Even if you don't think you're worthy, even if you don't think you're ready, God knows you're worthy and God knows you're ready. Get on it. It's the Breakfast Club. Breakfast Club, bitches! Y'all finished or y'all done?